like this. In the bed or inside the incubator, there is, this is no already in developmental care. Another thing is about sensory motor, about the light, about the sounds. What is the important? The NICU should be like this. You cannot hear anything, right? So it should be your NICU is like this. They are asking me in one hospital, why our NICU, our score in, uh, in KPI is very low? He said, what to do? What we will do? Everybody is shouting. Everybody is selling their own bread. Buy here, buy here, buy here. So what is happening? Your baby is not sleeping at all in NICU. About the light, how, why we are putting the incubator cover? Why we are dimming the environment? Because this is how we want the baby to sleep also. So if there's no sleep, there's no better outcome for the brain development, especially for you. Can you sleep with light? Of course cannot. Can you sleep with a lot of sounds in your environment? Of course not. You will be irritated. And poor baby, the baby cannot complain. Then how about in olfactory senses also with the taste? How you are supporting the baby during suction? What are you using? Are you using saline for suction? Cleaning the mouth, suctioning the, the nose and the uh, in the mouth. So you're not supposed to use saline. You will use sterile water. Saline instilled only in the ETT with the minimal according to the age of the baby. So there is a lot of evidence already that saline is not recommended in suctioning, especially for the premature babies. Then how about kangaroo care? Do you practice kangaroo care now in your NICU? Can I hear, can I hear one? Yes? How? So we are, now, uh, we are now looking forward. Next month is our kangaroo care awareness. So it's like our prematurity awareness. I hope you will join the international awareness as well. So kangaroo care is very important for the brain development. It's also it's a, a non-pharmacologic. It also enhances the successful breastfeeding if you're doing kangaroo care. As early as possible, then it will help you also to enhance the successful breastfeeding. That is the recommendation from the WHO and CDC. Then how, how you bat the baby? Are you batting the baby at night? Why? The baby, night it should be sleeping time, okay? How about you guys? You're sleeping and, you're, and your maid or your husband are going to wake you up. Yalla, go, mashanin tapitarwis. What you will do? Of course, you will be irritated, right? So how about the poor baby again? The baby cannot talk. So what you will do? Bathing is not on the night time. Bathing is for sleeping. Nighttime is for the baby's brain development. So bathing, it can be in the daytime, in the afternoon, and bathing should be involved again the parents. And that is very important if you involve the parents, okay? So we have two types of bathing. We have a spot bathing and immersed swaddling bathing. Then what you need to consider in bathing, are you going to bath or are you going to do the batting every day to your patient in NICU? Yes or no? no. You have to assess if the baby needed or no, especially the premature babies. That's why we have two types of batting. The spot baiting and immerse swaddling. And from the recommendation of infection control, they want you to use chlorhexidine bat. So what you need to remember with chlorhexidine bat, 2% should be used to the two months and uh, above, and 1% uh, and below that should be used in the premature babies. Because there's a lot of evidences that it will absorb, especially to the sensitive skin for the premature baby, and that is, again, for the neuroprotection of the brain. And again, another thing is, about co-regulation and self-regulation. So what is important here? 
We need to support the baby from pain management. Do, you, do your NICU have the guidelines of pain protocol? What you are using for your assessment and reassessment? Do you assess your baby every, how many hours should be to assess the baby? Huh? Yes, it should be the, the routine from the time of admission in each care, in every management, and in, it's not a, every, every, there is also routine every four, every eight hours, or every, it depends to your management. It's not all the same, okay? So the assessment of the pain is according to the baby need, especially if the baby is critically ill and ventilated or in high frequency. And if you have all the painful procedure, what are the painful procedure that we have? Suctioning, insertion OGT of the feeding tube, cannulation, heel prick, lumbar puncture, eye examination, intubation, we need to sedate our baby. At least the lowest dose of fentanyl or whatever you want to use in your pain protocol. So this is internationally recommended from all the, from the neonatal pediatric as well. Then, how about knowing the behavioral cues? Do you know, do you know that your baby's talking to you? If, yeah, they are talking, even the most extreme premature, even the 22 weeker is talking to you. They're telling you something, but you cannot hear them. They're shouting on you, but you cannot hear them. So in, in developmental care, you should have the skill on how to read your baby, how to talk to your baby through their gesture, through their color, and through their vital parameters. So with, with all this gesture, with all this vocabulary from your baby, you can anticipate and you can help the baby to support this baby's sensitivity and to support this baby what the babies need, especially if the baby is in stress, okay? Then how about the knowing the state regulation? When the baby is sleeping, you must know when the baby on deep sleep, when the baby is, is just only on the light sleep, when the baby is aroused and about to feed, and the baby still is sleeping, how are you going to approach that baby? When the baby is awake, what should the baby should do? The baby all, also needs socialization, but not socialization that you're going to. The most, uh, the most socialization acceptable for that baby is the mother's voice talking with their baby. So what we need, the mother or the father or the family should be, be always beside with the baby. Then another thing is, so here in positioning, so these are the positioning that we have in our NICU. So it's not mentioned in your NICU, but it's happening still around from 2017, this kind of positioning. This kind of uh, positioning, this is not According to the consultant, that uh, that is what I what that is what I want the position for the NIRP guidelines. What it's not an NRP guidelines. So in this regards, you are not supporting the baby, but you already uh, keep the baby on the brain uh, compromise. Also, why the diaper is too big for the small babies? So the diaper also all. Everything is not good in this kind of this baby because it will cause also IBH and fracture for the pelvic and leg for these babies. Another thing is, still, what is happening here? How do you feed this baby? This is not a right position. This one, you are taping still, yeah, it's still still ongoing. So it's still ongoing, they're putting this, and this is when you are in the other country, you will be sued. You will be in jail if you do this, okay? So I asked the nurse, and it's not the, it's, we, there is also a reason, and the nurse is telling, I have six babies, I have three ventilated, and this is post-op, the whole night is crying, then what did you do? 
when the baby is crying, I put that pacifier and plaster it so that the baby will not cry. Why the baby is crying? The baby is in pain, right? Because the baby is post up. So we cannot blame because the, the institution or the hospital should follow for the compliance for the ratio. Patient ratio, so what is happening? We're not giving the quality care. And this one, this is not acceptable also in developmental care. There is a proper eye cover and this baby will be in trouble with to become blind. This one also, there is a suffocation. And the nurse is taking care of six babies. Only five to 10 minutes, she will not going to look at this. The baby will die anytime, right? So there's a lot of things that is also in developmental care, so the system should support also the caregiver. So after developmental care, so this is now 2019, so look at the changes from 2017, 18 to 19. So this is what happening already. So this is, we call the nesting, how to support the baby, to keep the baby like in, still inside the uterus, it's still inside the mother, to keep them more comfortable, more sleep, and better outcome of brain development. So still this is one ongoing in 2018. This is all unsupported position. So after implementation of developmental care, so this is what we have already. Diaper. What we will do with the diaper? We need different sizes according to the size of the baby, okay? Because this will cause IBH also for the baby. This will cause also fracture from the pelvic in the leg. So who will going to support this? The system. The hospital should escalate this. They should provide also from the logistic. So how about this one? This baby came from delivery room. Why we need to put diaper from delivery room or OR going to NICU? After that, when this baby will reach NICU, the nurse in NICU will going to remove again that diaper. So what will happen? Do the, develop, do the delivery or the OR nurse are expert to put the diaper of that small baby. From the time, from delivery room, what they're going to do? Okay, so they will put this, they will, they will, they will not mind, they will not going to check with the baby, but they have to put this diaper, and then they will transport the baby to the, to the nursery or to NICU. Then when this baby reaches the NICU, the nurse will remove again and put another diaper. From there onwards, the baby develop IBH one to two, okay? So this one, is, so look at this baby. And if you're not using the blood pressure cup, can you please remove it? Because what I'm observing is, I will come in the morning, when I will come back in the afternoon, is still the BP, money, uh, BP cup is still there. When I asked the nurse, the nurse said, because I have a lot of patient, I don't have time to put it back again. So keep it until the time after my duty finish. And, until the next shift, they will do the same thing. So 24 hours, I have my BP cup. So what we need in feeding? So what we need in feeding? We need the mother to feed the baby. We need the nurse to, to hold the baby in appropriate, uh, appropriate position. We need also the ventilated baby the nurse should sit down beside the baby during feeding. And why? You're handling three. One is to three, one is to four. You have four feeding and, and feeding tube. 
So every two to three hours, you're gonna feed each baby. So what will happen? You're going to have back pain and leg pain. And the following day, you're going to call your head nurse, I'm sick leave, I have back pain, I have, and so on. So, as I told you, in developmental care, we took care also the caregiver. And we need you to provide a very comfortable chair when you're carrying your baby. So, during the procedure, ultrasound, echo, you need to be there and support and hold your baby. You need to contain because the baby is in pain, the baby is stressed during the procedure. And the, when the parents is there, it's their right to hold their baby. So what will be, what we have to do, whatever the policy in our NICU, hand hygiene compliance, from the infection control guidelines, anything, as long that you're giving the baby to the mother. From the sensory motor, still, as I told you, this is not acceptable at all in NICU already. So this will cause blindness to the baby. Infection then lead to blindness. So what we need in the environment, it should be standard according to the According to the uh, according to the standard in NICU, the distance and should be have the incubator cover. The incubator cover will support the baby from uh, noise in NICU and from the direct light inside the room. So, what is the acceptable light? Only 200 to 400 lux. This is the one. So, this is the only one acceptable for the baby. Okay, but now in France there are a lot of evidences. They are even going to 35 to 100 lux in their NICU. And they have all the evidences, and during that evidence, from the, from the outcome, the baby still is sleeping, it's still awake every 30 to 60 seconds. So meaning the baby is not sleeping the whole 24 hours. So what we need, we have also the air cuff. So this is the support. And we have the decibel meter that it's telling you that, hey, you are already beyond the acceptable parameters. So what is the acceptable parameters? It's 45 to 65. But in France, again, they are working already with a study on 30 decibel meter. I cannot hear anything. So that is ongoing already with all their study because they have shown to us last October in the vitral, in the, the vitral uh, ultrasound of the brain of the baby with the 30 decibel, uh, that 30 decibel, that sound, when the baby heard something, the brain is pulsating. All the, uh, all the veins is pulsating, especially the fragile veins of the brain. So this is how the baby is very active even they are inside the incubator with this kind of environment. So what we need to be silent always in NICU. So we need the decibel meter. There are three lights like uh, if you are in the, in the traffic violation, if you beat the red light, how many? 3,000 to 6,000. So red light will cause already hearing loss to the baby. It will become on this. If there is red there, there is already hearing loss to the baby. So yellow, it will warn you, you are going beyond the decibel meter. Green is the acceptable 45 to 65. But in Europe, in France right now, they are practicing 30 decibel meter. So as I told you, May 15 is the kangaroo care awareness. I hope you're going to join the international awareness and you can also update in the social media. Kangaroo care is very important, most especially for the brain development, especially for the premature baby. And the benefit of kangaroo care plus the benefit of breastfeeding, you're going to have a successful direct breastfeeding. So kangaroo care is not only for the mother, but also for the father. 
Now in Saudi Arabia, this is now 2018 and 19 practice. So this is Saudi Arabia. So five years ago, we have a patient. This is the product of kangaroo care. The baby is too sick. One month in high frequency, 27 weeker, 600 grams. 25 days in uh, 25 days in high frequency and one month in conventional. We encourage the mother to do kangaroo care, the mother and the father, day and night. And afterwards, this is now the baby. So what we need in bathing, we have, as I told you, we need a good environment, not nighttime, daytime, in the afternoon. And uh, immerse swaddling, while, why I'm showing this, it should be in the bathing tub, not in the sink. So in bathing, there is also a benefit for delayed bathing. As to the evidence, we can bat the baby within 12 to 24 hours after delivery. Why? The benefit is to reduce the risk of infection, stabilize infant blood sugar, improve the uh, thermoregulation, improve maternal bonding, and improve breastfeeding. So the evidence is already uh, around. So co-regulation and self-regulation, we need the pain protocol in NICU. So what we need, we are not allowed to do, what's this? arterial investigation through the brachial. Do you know that there's a lot of cases right now, we have a lot of cases right now in the court that nurses cannot go home to their country because there is amputation of the hands and uh, deformities of the hands of the baby because of this practice. We're not recommending, especially in NICU, by taking brachial sample, and most especially how you're going to take care of the, with the baby with, uh, with the ICD. How you, this is not the proper fixing of ICD. This will cause infection to the baby. This is not the proper way on how to, to uh, care for the UAC. And this is not the proper way, especially for the premature baby, to put line in the head, and especially this one. So what we need, we need an expert professional to do the pick line. So who can do this? The nurses can be trained and the physician or, or your neonatologist in your NICU. So they should be in every NICU, there should be a skilled professional to have this pick line so that we're not going to have all these things. So another thing, in the pain, this baby is totally in pain because the position is not good position. During intubation, this is not a good, this is, there's no support at all during intubation for that. It's extreme premature baby, for sure there will be IBH already. This one, where the skin care, when you're removing plaster to the intubated baby, how are you going to remove it? This is very, very painful for that baby. How are you going to fix your ATT? Are you skilled to fix the ETT, guys? Yeah. So this is not the way, but it's still ongoing. So how are you gonna take care of this baby? With the ICD bilateral, with the, U with the UAC, this is not the proper care of this baby. So if you are a critical care nurse, you cannot find this. Alhamdulillah, when I was, an, I'm telling, I'm very proud I'm a NICU nurse, but I never do this to my patient and I work to a very prestigious hospital, and this is not the standard. There should be a quality monitoring all this kind of practice. There should be a policy, a guidelines. The infection control should interfere. The quality and the skills of the staff is very important, and the ratio of the staff should be addressed. Why? Why this is happening? Because the ratio of the staff is not complied. So we need the system to support us. Here, the inappropriate, the transport system. This is not the proper way to transport the baby. This is going for, for MRI. This is to receive the baby from delivery room and OR. This is not really safe at all. And this is not recommended. So what is recommended? 
we need the transport incubator. No matter that this baby is uh, normal or sick baby, we need to put the baby on a transport incubator. Self-regulation. We need to keep the baby on a very, very stable condition. Like when you're going home, how you're sleeping to your bed, you, it should be also the same like the baby. Pain management, if we don't have the sucrose, what we have? It's free. We don't need the sucrose. What we need? We have the breast milk. So no matter, that mother will give you sometimes two drops of breast milk. Do not shout the mother. Be thankful you have something to support the baby as a pain management, okay? The breast milk is very important. And how you keep your baby self-regulated. Uh, self these are the behavioral cues. So these are some of the cues that the baby shows you. So this is sitting on air. The baby is on stress because there's no good support or good boundaries. This is first thing, the baby is in pain or discomfort. The baby is sleeping comfortably. The baby is telling too much light, but you're not helping the baby. So the baby is telling you, stop, please close the light. But for you, you are deaf. And here, this is how to keep the baby self-regulated and to keep calm, especially there everything is settled. So what you have to do, keep always this hand near to the face and mouth and let the baby suck their hand. And this will keep them comfortable and with everything is stable from the brain, from respiratory, and from the cardiac. So nothing. And here, this is the hand-to-hand -hand. if the baby is doing like this, especially if the baby is, I'm doing well, please keep quiet, do not disturb me. Or you can see like this, this is foot clasping. So the baby is very comfortable, do not disturb. Do not, do not, uh, uh, do not stay and disturb talking with your colleagues or to your friends in front of the baby's incubator. You have to go away where you want, you are allowed to talk. Actually, you are allowed to talk, you are allowed to, to yell, you are allowed to laugh, but outside the NICU. You have your pantry, you have your nursing, a nursing area, so you can do what you want there, but not in the care area. So, from the state regulation, the baby is very stable from the state regulation. The baby should sleep because, let me ask you, how many, how many hours the baby should sleep, supposedly? How many hours should be? Between 19 to 22 hours. But do you believe that the baby is not sleeping in your NICU? Do you believe that? Even one hour they're not sleeping. So if your NICU is like silent like this, Maybe I will believe that your baby will sleep. But if you're Nico, like what you have right now as a reality, you're not helping your baby at all for their brain development. So the mother, this is a very important socialization for them. And when the baby will go in to tell you like this, have you seen your babies doing this? So what you have to do, you have to give your hand. And if the mother is there, let the mother to offer the hands of the mother. Why? Because the baby is looking for something to hold, something like security, that I want my mother. So what is the baby doing when they cannot find the, the hand of the caregiver, the hand of the mother? The tube. They can extubate themselves. They can remove their, uh, they can remove the, uh, the IV line even, they know where is it, right? They know, because they're looking for something to hold, but you're not giving your hand. So then afterwards she will be irritated to that baby because the baby removed the feeding tube, right? So these are the things. So when the baby is on deep sleep, And 
when the baby is too much irritated already. So how you need to, how do you know that your NICU is improving? So these are the data that you need to, uh, you need to take and how you are improving. So you can assess every year. So if your IBH is going below the international benchmark 10% with, uh, with your deliveries, ROP also below the international benchmark, so you improve a lot already. Then if your infection rate is zero, do you believe that you can get an infection rate of zero? Yes, yes. Here in Riyadh, a lot of hospital, their infection rate is zero. Okay, why? Because of staff ratio. So mortality and morbidity will become uh, also going down. Hearing, everything is okay with the hearing screening and the CCHD. Then protocol, the criteria of admission and discharge in your NICO. Actually, admission, admission are, uh, there is no uh, acceptable admission area in NICO and this is not acceptable. Once the level of criteria is level one, two, and three, then direct to NICO admission. If not, then direct to the ward, or to the mother. That's all. No stabilization area, no admission area. So the environment is very important from the infection control. Why the environment is very important? Because it will affect the baby's health. What will happen? The baby will get sick, especially the incubator if, the, if not clean and not according to the standard, the cleaning from the manufacturers and according to the infection control. What will happen? Your infection is always there. And the worst scenario, the baby will receive that infection and the baby will die. Just to have a not clean incubator. So. What is also, we need also a safe environment. We are recommending for you to have an individualized stock in your incubator. Not every now and then you are running, you are rooming around the, around the, around the room, going back and forth. So the more you are moving, the more infection is ongoing. The more infection that will be in the patient environment. The, the patient uh, zone, it should be clean every shift. What are the patient zone? The table, the chair, the IV pump, the machine, incubator, what else? The files. So that is the patient zone. So it should be clean every shift. Then the dirty utility. It's dirty utility. Why should I keep that one clean? Because you are going there, and when, then you will going back to your baby. So you will be contaminate, contaminated from dirty utility and going back to your care area. So you are bringing the infection from dirty utility to your care area. So dirty utility, it doesn't mean dirty utility, it also should be clean. So your environment, it's very important to become organized. So we have also the breastfeeding room and we should comply on how to store this milk. So this storage is very wrong practice. So there is a guidelines on how to store the milk. This chair is the most comfortable chair for the caregiver, for the nurse, when you're taking care for your baby. You're not allowed to sit down here where you're when you are not feeding your baby or you're not carrying a baby. So this chair is for the caregiver and for the parents. So breastfeeding is very important. You must also organize your breastfeeding room. So these are all the NICUs now around the kingdom that is already developed. So also hand washing area is very important always at the entrance of the NICU. 
So nobody is allowed to enter in a care area of NICU if you're not washing your hand. So always be reminded with the file moment. It's not for the nurse's responsibility, but this is a multidiscipline task. So the support of the caregiver. So what is important? Accommodation, meals of the staff, the transportation, medical and health care support, the duty hours vacation in according to regulation, and the educational support, and also trips. So you need also to plan a trip for your staff. Not always, there are always stress inside the hospital. Everybody, it's not only for the NICU staff, but the whole system. So what we need also to support for them? They need a very comfortable staff area. Do you have this staff area? Do you have like this? No? So you need to develop it. It's ongoing right now. You know where is this? This is in Yanbu General. This is in Aljuf. And this is in Secret. So you can find also on how to, how to, how, what, how we develop developmental care in, in the kingdom. So we have already the abstract already published last 2018, November 2018. And you can find in the website. So the conclusion is developmental care brings a change of culture which is necessary to orient the healthcare professionals, the institution, the impact of developmental care is highly important, improve the NICU culture to allow the parents and family to play the major role of their newborn's life, and change the culture to fully comprehensive, uh, comprehend how NICAP developmental care support the newborns and their families. Take home message, Nurse Vilma is taking care of baby Brandon 28 years ago, and they met on the same NICU. And now Brandon is already pediatric uh, physician. So thank you very much. This is NICAP all about, and Ms. Selby, we're going to continue. I asked her, because actually it's already time, I asked her that I'm going to continue uh, the whole uh, presentation. And now, Ms. Selby, we're going to uh, give you about the brain, uh, developmental care brain, about the brain support. Five minutes break. <laughs> Five minutes. Yeah, the audience needs also support. <laughs> so you want a five, a five minutes break, or you want to continue? Just stretch. the microphone like this like this I will put a timer Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, my name is Elvi Dilasina. I'm a unital nurse in King Fahad Medical City, and an IDCAP professional by 2015, and currently uh, I am one of the NIDCAP Federation International member, which is uh, from the NIDCAP.org. This is a program developed by Dr. Als. It is based in Harvard, University and the founder and still uh, working on until this day. 
Actually, we don't have her picture, but she is already uh, retirees. So the background of why she developed this program is because she delivered a premature baby and with a developmental disability. So that's why she developed the program that is to take care of the brain of the baby. So Ms. Buenape already uh, described about the developmental care, what's happening in the kingdom, and so supposed to be, my topic should be the before her, but uh, according to the program, so we follow the program. So the basic is uh, for us to understand the developmental care, first, we should understand the sensory system development. Isn't it like, uh, we are talking about here the preterm birth. Uh, supposed to be the baby should be carried over until nine months, right? However, uh, due to some factors uh, like beyond the control of the mother or the babies, the baby born too soon. So example, uh, six months or 24 weeks. Um, the, you, uh, the baby's sensory system development is uh, developing, supposed to be the completion is from the last trimester, from uh, the last three months. That is the time supposed to be to develop. However, when this baby uh, born too soon, the baby is removed from the mother's womb to the NICU, which is the, not a normal environment for the brain to grow. Do you agree? Okay, uh, can uh, everybody of us here working in the NICU? Okay, so uh, can you just figure out what's the environment inside the NICU, the womb? The mother's womb. It is with the water. The dark. Warm. Quiet. Yes. Okay, how's the position? Fetal position which is uh, flex, the hands close to the mouth and the face, the knees close to the body, okay. Okay, the other thing is inside the mother's womb, it is safe, free from pain, free from stress, the mud, everything is uh, predictable. The baby has no effort about what to do or to sustain herself because they're totally dependent to the mother. And inside the womb, this is the first relationship of a human being, the baby and the mother. Okay, so let's go to the NICU. The, uh, let's take example, the baby is 24 weeks. So out from the mother to the NICU, what happened first? Okay. Oh, so this is what, it's opposite. Everything what we talk about, then it's the opposite. First, the baby now is separated to the mother. When she is separated to the mother, to the NICU, in the NICU, the sound is unpredictable. Sometimes it is quiet, sometimes it is noisy. There will be too many hands handling the baby. There will be pain because of the interventions. And there will be, this is dry. It's not, there's no buoyancy anymore. The nutrients is completely different from the supplies inside the womb. 
Okay, take a look at this. So, this is the womb and this is the NICU. This is a real baby uh, with consent from parents. So, let's go back here. So the sensory system, we are, it's about, there are vestibular, the gravity and the balance, proprioception, which is about muscle and joint sensations, about the taste, the smell, the touch, the sound, and the sight. All these systems are developing on the last trimester of the baby inside the womb. Now, when the baby is in the NICU anymore, meaning the baby's brain is developing in an abnormal environment. And any abnormal experience is affecting the brain development. So this system and their adaptive response are dependent on infant's gestational age, severity of illness, and the extent of exposure to multiple stimuli. Whatever is uh, we experience, it is recorded in the brain. So negative experience is negative memory. Okay, so these are the systems and when they are uh, maturing. Sensory nerve, around 11 weeks. The vestibular around 21 weeks, gustatory is about 20 weeks, the olfactory about 8, eight weeks, the auditory about 24 weeks, and the last who will develop is around 40 weeks. So this is, I explained already, and this is the sensory system, and this is our, the touch. Okay, why the kangaroo care is very important to the baby's brain development? Why do you think? What's the implication of touch? Yes. Yes. Yes, all you said is correct. I will add an, into that. You, you know when the baby is uh, now is outside the womb, but it is still possible to be with the mother outside. So, so it's, if he cannot be inside, then he can be outside. At the same time, this baby will experience the mother's touch the smell of the mother, which is familiar to her. By the way, the baby cannot recognize the face of the mother, but they can recognize by the voice and the smell. So at the same time, we are supporting the baby while outside the mother's womb. The familiar taste, touch, smell, and you know that our skin is very sensitive. So the since it attached, there is uh, some uh, hormones release and goes to the brain. So that is the number one, uh, the thing that we cannot buy in kangaroo care is it supports brain maturation. So sense of balance during positioning, uh, you know in our lectures, the mention about midline. So midline positioning means it's like in the fetal position. The hands should be closer to the face or the body. The knees, it's not out, outward, but towards the baby, the body. And you know, when you uh, lift the baby, I mean, when we change the position of the baby, it should not, we should not lift. 
it should touch in the surface. It's like lag roll. This is actually what we are talking here is like a summary because when we talk about positioning, it takes more than a day because we need to learn the pathophysiology of position, the neuro uh, motor development. Okay, the taste and smell, uh, it was mentioned before by Ms. Bernapi. The familiar taste to the baby is the mother's milk and it is similar to the, what's inside? Amniotic fluid. So that is a familiar taste to the baby. So we mentioned already, we discourage anything that familiar taste to the baby because it gives a noxious experience to the baby. Noxious means not good, not soothing. Okay, Re regarding the hearing, it was mentioned. According to the American Academy of Pediatrics, it was mentioned that the acceptable sound level in the NICU is between 45 to 65. When it is above 65, we call it noise. Because why it is uh, called like that? Because uh, above 65 decibel, that is beyond the tolerance of the baby's uh, hearing. This is already noxious to them. So there is a long-term effect, not just upon discharge, but we will learn that when the baby is about to learn, there will be language, a barrier, or learning disability, hearing impairment. And the soothing sound, why we need always the mother? Because the mother's voice is the soothing voice to the babies. So we cannot provide developmental care without parents. They are not a visitor anymore, but they are our partners in care. So the vision is the last to develop. And why the NICU need to be dimmer? or the incubator must be covered because the baby's uh, eyes are not yet fully developed. And they cannot uh, accept, I mean the light is too noxious for them. Okay, so this is the pictures of the brain around 20 weeks, 35 weeks, and 40 weeks. Can you see the difference? So these 20 weeks, if at, or less than 37 weeks, they are easily hurt or harmed physically, which affect also the mental and the emotional well-being. Okay, so let us, we are the nurses, we are the caregivers. This is what we need to provide. Age-appropriate care. What is appropriate for them? We need to protect the baby from sleep deprivation. Pain management, so about the healing environment, this is about individualized room for the babies. And human, system means the hospitals. And how we take care of the babies during feeding, skin care, and the positioning, and the family involvement. So this is example. We need to know the stages of sleep in order for us to protect the baby from sleep deprivation. So this is a uh, long also topic. So what we can say, uh, this, it is easier to build strong children than to repair broken men. Because when this baby has a disability we cannot repair them anymore. So that's all. This is the reference. And thank you. This is now the baby that was in the early year. Uh, for now, she is five years old, born uh, 26 weeks, 800 grams without disability now. Thank you for your attention.
then so I can uh, give some uh, we have a technical uh, issue here I don't know what happened with our videos but we're going to show some other videos about the developmental care especially for support of baby during the intubation in um, delivery room so the, de the developmental care as I told you started always from the delivery room And I'm going to give also about the, uh, about the feeding cues and how to support the baby during feeding. So this is the video about the... the baby is being resuscitated following premature delivery. Mm -hmm. Caregivers keep the baby in a tucked position and use the baby's cap to dim environmental light. Mm -hmm. Around the bed space is quiet and calm. and how to support the baby during delivery from the time of following first hour. Caregivers keep the baby in a tucked position and use the baby's cap to dim environmental light. Around the bed space is quiet and calm. Make a roll, you can make a blanket or a towel, warm, 
So when you are expecting and when you receive a call, you know what is the gestation age of your babies that you're going to assess, especially from the NRP side. So you have to prepare the bed before the delivery will come. So we are already anticipated what bed we're going to prepare. But, it, but we need always a support around the resuscitator. So even we don't have the developmental care product, it's okay. So we have blanket, we have towels, and it should be warm also. So I want to ask, are you using fully 18 bag during your delivery when you're assi assisting a baby, premature babies? Are you using it? Yes. But not all. So what plastic you are using anyway? Do you use the real for the 8 and bag or you use this plastic bag like this? So what plastic you are using? We need to uh, speak in one language. So if you don't have any poly 8 and bag because poly 8 and bag is very expensive, this one is cost 200 real each and this is disposable, but it's helped a lot. But we don't need to buy this very expensive one, but if your hospital can can buy it, why not? It's more better. The alternative for poly 18 bag, if you don't have, is the cling wrap or the plastic. Plastic, food plastic. So we have two types of cling wrap. The cling wrap for packaging and cling wrap for food. So we're, we're going to use the cling wrap for food because that is clean, not the packaging. Okay? So you can use this one as one of the alternative for the pull a 18 bag or this plastic bag during delivery. So what is the important, why we need the pull a 18 bag and why we need to stabilize the baby's thermal regulation? Because once this baby, as I told you a, a while ago to, uh, to my presentation, that once this baby will be hypothermic, 200 real is nothing compared to the first line treatment of hypotension, hypo, hypoglycemia, and when the baby will be critically ill, the first line of treatment is 7,000 reals compared to 200 reals. But no need for 200 reals. We have the cling wrap. How much the cling wrap? 35 reals to save the baby's life. And that 35 reals, how many baby can, can use the 35 reals, right? So as recommendation, you should check your delivery room in OR. It should be available, the cling wrap or the plastic wrap and also to your NICU. So this is very important. Then, during the transport. So what you need also in the transport incubator. It should be ready, it should be warm. Do not put the baby in that transport incubator. It's okay that that is transport incubator, but it still need to be warm. Because once the baby will go out from intrauterine, it still they are trying to be, to adapt the intrauterine temperature. So the temperature should maintain in delivery room in OR, in the environment should be from the Sibai standard in JCI that is 25 degrees to NICU. It should be 22 to 30 degrees. That is to the environment. So why it need to be, need to uh, keep this one so that we need to maintain the, uh, the baby's environment through their transition and adaptation to the outside environment. And the recommendation also is we're not going to remove the vernix caseosa, especially for the first four to six hours of life. Leave that vernix caseosa because that vernix caseosa or anything from that baby's body is a protection, as a, is also as a barrier for the baby not to be harmed from the outside to the environment. It also helped that baby to keep also the thermal regulation. And then the recommendation, as I told you, the benefit of delayed batting. Do not, do not bat the baby at once. When you bat the baby, it becomes hypothermic. What will happen, especially for the, for the normal baby or the term baby, they will going to develop what? Transient TTN or the transient tachypneic respirator or respiratory distress. Then they're going to be admitted in NICU. So when the baby will be warm and 
sleep inside the incubator, the baby, you can observe the baby, the baby will going to be settled. So we're not recommending to batch your baby by the time of delivery. You can delay at least 12 hours, 24 hours, or even 24, 48 hours as the recommendation from the evidence base. Then another video that I'm going to show is about the feeding cues. Feeding So in feeding readiness, it's very, uh, feeding readiness or the feeding skill is very, very difficult for the baby in order to develop one of the skills that is very difficult for them to develop. So once you feed the baby, we are not allowed to hold this baby in here. What is the, what is happening? We are holding the baby like this inside the incubator and we are feeding the baby like this. So what I told you in developmental care, what is the major system that is affected? The brain, respiratory, and the cardiac. So when you hold this baby and you're holding already this neck, this is very dangerous. This baby, something happened, it will going, this baby will die at any time especially the way we are handling from the neck. And this baby will not be comfortable because you keep this baby on sitting position, like uncomfortable position inside the incubator or under the warmer. Another thing, what will happen? There will be difficulty of breathing. So what will happen next? The baby will deteriorate. Or what will happen? The baby, there will no successful feeding introduction. So how to, feed, how to feed the baby? First, you have to sit in a comfortable position. For me, I love to feed if I want to take rest in NICU. Because why? I can sit. That is the secret. You want to take rest? Take one baby and feed the baby. So you have to sit in a comfortable position. It should be no wheels, not moving, because that is also risk for fall. So you have to swaddle the baby and hold the baby in a comfortable position and a semi-upright. Remember, we are not a nursing mother. Nursing mother means they have a lot of position, right? How the mother position to feed the baby? They have this skin to skin like this. They have like this, right? And football position, right, if they have two babies sometimes. So we're not a nursing mother, especially our guys here. They are also NICU nurses. So they cannot feed the baby like this position, right, Muhammad? Yes. So Muhammad is one of our NICU nurses also. So we have a lot of colleagues. They are all male NICU nurses. So how to feed the baby? You have to hold on a semi-upright position. The feeding bottle, we're not allowed to open this one. We're not allowed to put another hole. So what I'm seeing on the side, bedside of the, ba of the nurse, there is a blade, or there is a scissor, or there is a 10, uh, 10 gauge or syringe, uh, this uh, needle. Why? Because they are trying to put another hole, or they're trying to cut, or they're trying to add the hole. Why? They want to finish the feed in a, uh, not on the time, but they want to finish it very fast. So what will happen? It will be raised to the baby. Another thing is how to keep the baby, how to uh, introduce the bottle to the baby. By rooting reflex, do not put this nipple direct to the mouth of the baby. What you have to do, you have to do the rooting reflex. When the baby opens the mouth, you have the opportunity to put the nipple. Then, when the, when the baby latch to the nipple, what will happen? You have to wait. 
do not manipulate. Then, yan lang. Because I still have five babies there to feed. Or ten babies. That is the ratio. Okay? So, there, you have to manipulate. Or sometimes you will open the mouth of the baby. So this is very painful. Remember, you have to respect the baby the way you respect your elders. Whatever the respect giving to the old, you have to give respect to the baby as well. We are all the same human. They are not cat. They are not animals. They are also human and deserve respect. So you don't need to push this nipple when the baby is not opening the mouth. Wait for the baby to open the mouth by rooting reflex, then wait. Then for sucking, the baby can suck only up to six sucking. Or enough for the milk is stored in the cheek, and the baby will swallow that one. Okay? So we're not allowed to put another hole because all nipples is engineered already to the amount that the baby need. So we're not allowed to put another hole or add the hole. So once the baby suck, especially for the feeder and grower premature baby, one, two, three, suck, you have to remind the baby also to breathe because the baby is not breathing. Do you know that baby can suck 20 minutes without breathing? By the time of 20 minutes, this baby is deteriorating already. There is cyanosis deter deterioration already. Why? Because the baby cannot, do not know, still yet do not know how to breathe and how to suck. So there is not yet organized. So the skills is very difficult for them. So you need to support the baby. You need to keep them comfortable position so what will happen? One, two, three, breath, or one, two, three, four, five, two, six. It depends how the baby is sucking. Good sucking or just only light to moderate sucking, you have to support the baby. So one, two, three, or one, two, three, four, five, six, suck. What you will do, are you going to remove the nipple? No, because to introduce the nipple, it's very difficult, okay? Then you are using, if you, one, two, three, suck, remove. Then, again, now you are using the energy of the baby. And why the consultant or the neonatologist doesn't want you to feed the baby? The 1.5 kg and below. Because they will lose their weight. But if you are developmental skilled to feed your baby orally, you will not lose the weight, but however, you're going to help the baby to gain the weight by oral feeding. So what will happen from 10 ml to 15 ml and the baby stop? Baby's not sucking. Of course, the baby is tired. So what you have to do, you have now the opportunity to burp the baby in between. So. You can remove the nipples, the bottle, and wait. Our traditional burping, how? Right? Another thing is, hold the baby like here. We're not doing, the baby is not choking, we're not doing DLS, okay? So, in order to keep this baby to burp, you just keep the baby on the same position. Within five to 10 minutes, the baby will burp. So imagine, how many minutes now I'm, I'm sitting? Right? So I'm relaxing. I'm resting. Right? But the other baby will become hypoglycemic. That's why we need the ratio again. So the maximum should be one is to three, to one is to six to the level one, one is to two to level two, one is to one to level, level three. Sometimes level, level three, two nurse, one baby. 
depend on how the baby is critical and sick. So that is the level of criteria of ratio in, uh, for the baby's uh, patient ratio in NICU. So maximum one is to six for the level one. Okay? So now you're feeding your baby. The baby burp. But if, what if the baby did not burp? What you will do? Are you going to do the stroke? So what you will do? So you will do on the other side and wait. So I have another five minutes to see it, right? I'm still resting. So the baby will burp in five minutes. I'm sure of that. But if the baby finished one and a half or two bottles, there will be a difficulty of burping. So what, there's another way of burping a baby. Like slow, rocking position. So you will be the one to do it. Not like this, okay? Not like this. Yeah, love burp because another baby will be fed. So we're not do, we will not do anything. Because the baby will be nauseated, then afterward, vomiting. So another thing, when you're feeding a baby, what happened if the baby sleep, not yet finished, the order is 35 ml, and the baby finished 20 ml. The baby sleep in front of you. What you will do? Are you going to wake up the baby? No. Bring back the baby in the bed, let the baby to sleep on the sideline position, it's more better, and keep the baby sleep. The baby will tell you when she will go to ask the remaining feeding. Because there is a cue that, hey, I still have my remaining feeding, I remember, give me. The baby will give you a sign. The baby will, will look around like this. If you're not minding your baby, the baby will cry. So we call that one day feeding cues. So meaning the baby is asking for the remaining feeding. 20 ml will be enough for them to sustain their sugar within one to two hours with the 20 ml. So keep the baby sleep again and go to the next baby. So this is how we're going to support the baby during feeding. But the most important is we need the parents to be involved. If the parents is there, let the mother to do it or let the father to do it, the feeding. Then you're just a supervisor or just looking at with the mother and the father feeding their baby or batting their baby, changing the diaper. For me, I don't have a word already. So who's the one working? The mother or the parents. And that is the most important that we need. We need to involve the, the parents in care giving. So in the video, yes? Yeah, so you will go in just to tilt the bottle. Do not remove this because it's very hard again to introduce. So I'll show you now on how to introduce the uh, nipple. So you will just tilt a little bit. Then wait, the baby will suck again. Then you will give again, not to remove. So this is how to introduce the Bottle feeding. Okay. But this one is not ready. So what will happen? The baby is trying to push, but the nurse is more stronger than the baby, right? So what will happen if you, if the baby is not ready to be fed? Look at the color also. The nose becoming pale, meaning the baby is stressed. So this is what happened if the baby is not ready for the feeding and if you push the baby
to put the nipple without the readiness of that baby. So the baby will gonna tell you when it was ready. So you, you do first the rooting reflex, let the baby to open the mouth, put the nipple, and wait the baby to suck. So that is a wrong practice. And this is the coordinated, uh, coordinate sucking and breathing. So this is 1.5 gram. So you need to observe your baby. Not you are feeding your baby and you're talking to your colleague. Okay? You need to concentrate with your baby. See? But since the baby is small, the nurse is trying to support not to give more sucking because this baby is just only 1.5 gram. And you can see the color from the nose that is meaning the baby is already getting tired and stressed. So that is on how to feed a baby. But the most important, as I told you again, is the parents. What is the time, sorry? Still. Still? So, now, do you know, how, anyone here know how to make the nesting? How to position the baby? Eddie, can you show to them? Adeline, please. I bring for you the blanket. Show to them on how to make, without the developmental care products. So you can make a nesting. What we are doing in our hospital is, since we don't have this, both this one, we are We call this one the bend the bumper. Okay, so it's <coughs> flexible. But since we have our blankets that is thick, we're just folding it like this and making it same like that. Just example. <laughs> So we are making two to make one like this, to be at, as oblong like this. <laughs> and once we make this one, we will put blanket on the top. Or if you have a big, big uh, linen, you can do like this. But since we don't have big one, what we are doing is we are just putting like this. just to make a comfortable bed for our babies. And we will put their babies like that. Just exact on the head and the foot. So the baby will not dangling the foot outside like that. <laughs> Thank you very much. And for, for if using like this, we are just making the half one and then putting this one. Thank you for our audience. How to change the diaper? Okay, changing the diaper. So we have the old diaper. So in changing the diaper, we have position. So in positioning also, so we position the baby. This is a, a supine. So we have supine, we have side lying, and also prone position. In positioning before the changing of diaper, so if the baby is on supine, you want to keep this baby on side lying because you want to change. How frequently we're gonna change the, the position of the baby because we don't want any um, skin pressure or lesion. So what we'll do within two to three hours depend to the needs of the baby. So not 
A routine, two to three hours, I need to change the position. What if the baby is sick? What if the baby is a lot of, a lot of, I, uh, there is bilateral ICD. There is also lines, there are also arterial lines. So what will happen? So we need to think, depend to the needs of the patient, especially in critical premature babies. So one, you want to change the position, so you can do the log rolling technique. So this one is very useful. So no need for you to lift the baby, as Ms. Selby uh, mentioned a while ago, do not lift the baby. So you have to do the log rolling technique. So you have the log rolling technique already. Then this one, you can also keep this one on the side as a support so that the baby will not go back, okay? So keep this hands near to the face and mouth. Then this one to be a little bit towards the flex. And this one, no need to plaster it because you need to adjust according to the need of the baby. Then what if the doctor, there is an emergency procedure like ICD intubation? You don't need to remove the baby just, to remo just for the nest, okay? So what you will do, you will just easily remove this one, support the baby, swaddle if this is for intubation, swaddle the baby. Sometimes the doctor, I remove this because I cannot. So it's very easy, do not remove the baby, swaddle it, ask the nurse, do everything what you want, but you are supporting the baby. Do not leave the baby without support because you remove already the support, okay? Let everyone to do they will do the suction, they will do intubation, but you as a caregiver, you are the one supporting your baby. By swaddling and containing your baby, you are already uh, helping the baby alleviate the stress and pain, okay? So positioning is very important. Then, the baby is already on side lying. So you want this baby to be in prone, prone position. We have a different, this is very big uh, prone plus, but you can make also a roll if you don't have this prone plus. So the prone, uh, you, the roll should be, let the baby to hug this and support the baby on roll like this. It should be the position, should be a little bit the head should be on the side, and the head is supported with the prone plus or the roll. So this should be, and then look at the support until here. Then a little bit like that. Then you can try to arrange again your nesting. So it's up to you on how you're going to support the baby. But it should be round, there's no creases at the back. Then, when you want to change the diaper, in changing the diaper, are you going to routinely to change the diaper every three to four hours? If needed. Okay, not every three hours, but not every shift. Every shift means the baby will develop nappy rash. At least you have to assess in every uh, changing the diaper. Not necessary because the routine is every three hours or four hours. Check, there is, uh, there is urine or stool, then change. So what if my baby is on prone position? So how I'm going to change the diaper? My baby is on prone position. Am I going to change the position just to change the diaper? Do I need to change the position? No need. Whatever the position of the baby, you can change it according to the position of the baby. So how to change it? Before removing, 
So you have to gather everything with you. You then have, oh, I forgot the cotton. So you will run again. I forgot the diaper. So you will run again. Every procedure, simple diaper procedure, everything should be on the bed. Okay? Everything should be at near to your side that you will not run there and here. So everything is ready. So before removing this, you have to put first the new diaper underneath. So you have to put the diaper. And while doing the di uh, putting the diaper, if the baby is awake, don't forget to give pacifier. Why? Non-pharmacologic, because the baby is still in pain. As I told you, all the procedure, all the touch, even our handling is pain for them. So you need to give, this is one of the non-pharmacologic, so you need to give pacifier. If there is milk, it's better to put milk a little bit here from the mother, then let the baby to suck and settle the baby while before changing the diaper. So you put the new one there. So you can start now removing the old one. But before removing it, make sure you need to clean the baby, right? Then how to clean down? So you can put a little bit here and clean. And once it's clean, you can remove the old. Why well, you need, we need to put the new one there already. Because anytime this baby will pass again, right? And we're not going to have a lot of manipulation. Then your new diaper is there by not changing the position of the baby and let the baby to be settled if the baby is still comfortable with this position. The best position that you can change the diaper is the side lying. That is the most easiest way on side lying position. So if the baby on side lying position, so what you have to do, you have make sure that this is supported. Put, give the pacifier. If somebody's there, let them hold the baby and settle and contain. If the mother is there, ask the mother, do you want me to hold your baby? You will change the diaper or I will change the diaper. You hold your baby. So always involve the parents if the parents is there. Okay? So if the mother is more competent to do it, let the mother to do it because the mother knows what is best for the baby. Okay? She will give the best care to the baby. She will not harm her baby. So you can change the diaper on side lying. So the same procedure before you will remove the, the old, you have to put the new one first in like not putting like this, but a little bit. On this side, like this. Then you need to remove again this one before removing, clean first. Then you will have again your new diaper without lifting the leg. So the same thing when the baby is on supine. We're not allowed to do this, okay? Especially for the premature baby. What happened? Why diaper will, will, will develop IBH to the baby? Because of doing this. And if the size is too big, the baby will not be comfortable, the baby will be in pain. If the baby is on the intense pain, the baby will develop also IBH. IBH is not only for the diaper, for the positioning, but a lot of causes. But this is one of the causes. So diapering and the size of diaper is very important in NICU. If you don't have, this is a highly critical. Okay? And we have a lot of cases also when I'm still a bedside. They will find out the baby because we don't have the right size of diaper, the big diaper. They will find out when the baby there is an emergency abdominal x-ray, there is already a healing fracture in the leg. Why? Because we are not using the proper use of, the proper size of diaper. 
So we have a different size of diaper. So these are the diapers. This is the diaper for 1.2 gram and below, and this is for the 800 grams and below. So we have this kind of small diapers. So if you did not, if you don't have, we are also, we can innovate. We can keep also this one small. We can cut if we don't have this small diapers. We can cut, we can put plaster. We'll remove some extra things from here. And for example, this is already cut. So we can create a small diaper. How to cut the Because I think that's harder to cut. You can cut and you can put plaster. Yeah, yes, and plaster it. I did not bring plaster, so you can plaster from here. You have to cut first, then you can plaster it, and you can create a small diaper. And another thing, sometimes we have a diaper that is too, um, is too thick. So you what you what you have to do to make it smaller and more soft. You have to do this, okay? in order to put the diaper and keep the diaper small when you are putting to the baby. Yeah, and we don't want that one because that will cause a fracture of the pelvic or the leg. So what you have to do, you can make it small like this by squeezing it, twisting it to make it small and soft. So it depends with the quality of the diaper that you will have. How to make this uh, piece? This one? No, the, this one for grown baby. Ah, this one? Yes, if you don't have, it's okay. Do you know the face towel or the small towels? No. Or baby, baby dress can be. No. You can innovate any, any soft materials. Like, like this, this is soft material. So, no need for you to have this. This is one of the developmental care products. We call this one as the prone plus. So, you can just make a roll. And the legs should be down. Yeah, and flex, flex towards the abdomen. That's why you need. Yeah, that's why. Which hospital you are, uh, my dear? <laughs> oh, King Khalid. I'm sorry. <laughs> I I will I cannot cover you. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. But uh, like this one of them is saying uh, like this. Yeah. yeah, that's why we have this developmental care training. Also, we have also competency with this. We are implementing in every NICU in the ministry. So to the tertiary hospital and more, most, most of the hospital, we are implementing this right now in Saudi Arabia. So in here, you just not, uh, you, you need a training. You need, a, uh, you need to attend the training to become, to know all this, how to position the baby. Because positioning is really difficult. So you need to be skilled and to be trained. So you are under Dr. Khalid? Dr. Khalid. Who's your head? Ah, Dr. Nemri, okay. I'll talk to Dr. Nemri. Come, come, come. Ask Dr. Nemri to invite us. <laughs> so this is the one. So anything else you want to ask about the positioning, the offering, and about developmental care? Anyone? Oh, like for like 28 weeks and under, do you like for the kneecap, mm -hmm. not move the head? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Actually, it's not only for the 28 weeker we are we are putting this. We are giving to all newborns. Mm 